Welcome to the Data Master L6 Smart Device App Tutorial. The Data Master L6 is very intuitive and uses common controls and screen flows found in many familiar iOS apps. When first opened, the app will default to the Readings page, which will be explained later. This tutorial will start by creating a job to set up a framework to report all the data you have received at a particular job site. The upper right corner menu icon provides buttons for the Readings, Jobs, Manage Devices, Account, and App Settings screens. Press the Menu button and press Jobs to access the Open Jobs screen. This screen provides a list of jobs that you have input into the app that are currently open. To create a new job, press the plus symbol below the last job in the list or by itself if no jobs have been entered. To select a job to view or edit, touch the arrow symbol to the right of the job title. The Archive section is where closed jobs can be stored. Touch the Archive button to access them for viewing, editing, or to restore to open status. To go back to the RH Reading screen, press the icon in the lower left corner. To archive a job, swipe the job name to the left and select Archive. The data will be placed in the Archive View list, and if you have provided your login credentials, the data will also be uploaded to your account on our backend website. After archiving the job, you may share it by email and other options as they appear on the pop-up menu. You must be logged in to access and share items in the Archive Vault. If you are not logged in, you will receive a prompt to log in. You will need to log in using the credentials from your f2170reports.com account. In the Archive screen, you can always restore a job from the Archive section by left swiping and selecting the Restore option. This will move the job back to the Open Jobs list screen. Press the Menu button at the top right of the screen to access the pop-up menu featuring buttons to reach the Readings, Jobs, Manage Devices, Account, and App Settings pages. Press Manage Devices to open the Devices screen and view all Rapid RH L6 devices connected by Bluetooth. When you are within range of a data grabber with Bluetooth or a data grabber contacted with a total reader, connection with the Data Master L6 app on your mobile device occurs automatically. The data grabber will appear as named on the Data Master L6 devices screen, along with all other data grabbers with Bluetooth capability. The closest unit with the greatest signal strength will appear at the top of the list. Placing the total reader within an L6 sensor to make contact with a data grabber will connect in a similar way as the data grabber with Bluetooth. Touch the name of the device to open a details screen for the device. You can retrieve the time-stamped historical data from the L6 smart sensor for viewing, saving, and attaching to reports. Click Save to Map to upload the data to your mobile device and display the entire list of time-stamped RH and temperature data for the L6 smart sensor. The data grabber is available for configuration if the settings button is green. However, if the settings button is gray, consult the troubleshooting section in the data grabber manual. If at any time the selected data grabber is out of Bluetooth range of the connected smart device, the device details screen will indicate out of range as the status and the last reading downloaded to the smart device will be shown. Each data grabber can be configured for device name, acclimation time, and log interval. The device name will be the unique identifier. The device name can be up to 12 characters long. The acclimation period is the number of days from the start that the data grabber will automatically engage the L6 smart sensor to capture a measurement and store in the L6 smart sensors. After this first measurement, other periodic logging continues to occur regardless of the acclimation time period. The log interval is the desired number of hours between periodic readings. These are the readings that will be grabbed after the initial acclimation time has occurred. The log duration is a calculation of the total number of days that periodic time-stamped readings will be taken based on the set log interval and the L6 smart sensor's maximum memory storage of 512 data points. Whenever you change the configuration of the data grabber, you must click the Write Settings to Device button in order to save the settings. If you wish to use the acclimation time and log interval settings as the default settings for one or more additional data grabbers, click the Save Defaults button. This saves the settings displayed as your default settings. After you have saved the desired settings and are ready to begin data logging, click the Start button to signal the data grabber to begin the acclimation time. Timestamp data logging begins as soon as the acclimation time is completed. Press the menu button at the upper right corner of the screen to access the pop-up menu. 
Choose App Settings to select between 12 or 24 hour time format, as well as metric and US standard units. The Account screen will provide you with the fields to enter credentials from your www.f2170reports.com account. Touch the plus button in the Open Job screen to enter the Add Job screen, where you can input specific information, such as the name of the job, the structure name, and address. You can also add information specific to the concrete slab, such as the thickness, sensor hole depth, target RH, service temperature, and concrete mix design water to cement ratio. The service temperature and water to cement ratio are used to estimate RH readings that would be expected were the slab currently at service conditions. This would be the case when readings are being taken when the slab is not already equilibrated to the service temperature and relative humidity, for instance, when the building envelope is still open. Annotations can also be added and attached to each individual job by pressing the plus annotations button at the bottom of the screen. In the annotations screen, you can add photos, audio memos, and text notes as needed to provide further documentation and details. After creating a job, you will want to add a new sensor map for each slab you will be testing on your selected job. Select the job in the open job screen and select the plus button to add a sensor map. Give the new sensor map a name. The default values will be filled in according to the job default values. Adjust these values according to your new job data. You can use the default stored image or take a picture with your camera to set a background image for the sensor map. Touch Change Sensor Map Background to change from the default background. Touch the check mark at the upper right corner to save the sensor map information. Here is the list of sensor maps for our job example, Big Box Store 214. Currently, only one sensor map is defined for this job. You can edit the job by selecting the upper right corner menu icon, edit a sensor map by right swiping and selecting the edit icon, or delete a sensor map by left swiping and selecting the delete icon. If readings are available, the average of all sensor readings will be indicated just before the small image and the number of locations indicated under the sensor map name. From this job screen, you can also create a PDF report that adheres to the ASTM F2170 standard for reporting purposes. This PDF report can then be emailed. It is recommended that you also email the report to yourself as well as your stakeholders, so you will have a record on file to reference quickly later. Press the Send icon at the lower right to generate a report. Before generating the PDF report, you will be presented with a report settings screen where you can fill in specific information about the job. The information is saved for each particular job and reports can be generated whenever needed, such as when new readings have been taken. Press Save to generate the PDF or the upper left arrow icon to exit back to the job screen. As you enter the data, the description of the field disappears. The generated PDF report includes the report settings information on the first page, followed by data and a screenshot of the sensor maps defined for the job. This report may be emailed or printed from any wireless printer. To select a specific sensor map for the currently viewed job, select the entry of interest to bring up that particular sensor map with details about any sensor locations that have been defined. This is an example sensor map created for this tutorial. It has four sensor locations previously defined. The sensor location name is next to each location, and if there is any data, the most recent RH measurement will be displayed next to each sensor pushpin indicator. At the bottom center, you can select to view the actual RH values or the service RH values as predicted for the service temperature defined for this sensor map, which is set when the sensor map is first created or last edited. The upper left arrow button closes the sensor map and takes you back to the list of all sensor maps for this job. The upper right menu icon takes you to the screen to edit this sensor map's details, such as target RH, service temperature, slab thickness, etc. The bottom left icon takes you to the measurement reading screen. The lower left icon takes you to the list of sensor locations for this sensor map. The icon directly above the lower right icon is used to create a new sensor location, which will be dropped on the center of the screen after being defined. The pushpins can be dragged around on the screen whenever desired. Press the plus button underneath the sensor map inside your job to read the Add Sensor Map screen. Give the new map a name that will be familiar to you. The other details on thickness, depth, and target RH are preset according to the sensor map default values, but may be adjusted accordingly. 
Touch the Change Sensor Map button at the bottom of the screen and choose an image from the camera or stored files. The bottom center icon on Sensor Map screen brings up the View List screen that lists all the sensor locations for that sensor map. In this list, you will see the most recent RH and temperature readings for each location and how long ago the readings were taken. At the bottom of the screen is the indication of whether these are actual readings or those estimated when the building is at service temperature. The readings will be taken according to the service temperature settings specified for this sensor map. To view the estimated in-service condition RH and temperature, press on the service RH to the right of the actual RH at the bottom of the screen. When viewing the estimated service temperature RH values, you will also note that the temperature displayed is the service temperature specified in the properties for the sensor map. To edit the service temperature setting, use the edit icon in the upper right of this screen. You can also add a new location from the view location screen by pressing the edit icon on the top right of the screen. To exit this screen, simply press the arrow icon in the upper left. You can edit a specific location by right swiping and selecting the edit icon, or you can delete a location by left swiping and selecting the delete icon. To view a specific location, press on that location's name to bring up the sensor location details screen. At the sensor location details screen, a list of all the readings taken and stored by the sensor will be displayed in a list format. A graph format is also available by pressing the graph button. When you touch the Service RH button, you will see a disclaimer informing you about Service RH prediction. Touch OK after you have read the disclaimer. The Sensor Location Details screen will provide a list of readings taken at that location with the most recent readings at the top. You can choose to view the actual RH or Service Conditions RH for all the readings at the center bottom of the screen. To view details about a specific measurement, touch the entry to bring up the RH Readings Report screen. The RH Reading Report screen provides information about the measurement, such as the sensor serial number used for the measurement, the date and time of the measurement, the RH and temperature, as well as the ambient RH and ambient temperature at the location. The slab thickness, hole depth, and target RH are also specified in the settings. This screen is very similar to the real-time reading screen that is displayed when a new measurement is made. When a new measurement is made, the reading screen displays not just the RH and temperature as read by the sensor, but also ambient RH and ambient temperature reading as read by the internal sensor embedded in the total reader device. Underneath the ambient readings is the service RH as estimated using the service temperature and concrete water to cement ratio as set using the icons directly to the right of these values. A service temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit and a cement to water ratio of 0.5 are quite common, but other values may be set. At the top of the screen, you will see a battery level indicator which will provide information about the batteries inside the total reader. The sensor serial number and calibration assurance date are shown at the bottom of the screen. Touch the Upload All Sensor Data button at the bottom of the page to upload sensor data to your smart device. The reading is automatically stored, and a reading stored image will appear briefly when you take a reading on this page. The back arrow icon will take you to the sensor map screen. Press on the push pin indicator on the correct location on the sensor map screen and confirm storing the reading at that location. Once a sensor location has at least one reading associated with it, the most recent reading will be displayed on the sensor map for each location that there is data. The color of the push pin for each location will be color coded according to the target RH setting for the sensor map. If the most recent reading is below the target RH, the push pin will be green. If the reading is above the target RH, but within 5% RH, the pushpin will be yellow. The pushpin will be red if the most recent reading is more than 5% RH above the target RH. In this example, the target RH is set to 87% RH. To view all the readings for a single location, touch the pushpin. Press and drag the pushpin to move it to a different location on the sensor map. To delete the most recent reading for a location, or to delete the entire location, just perform a long press on the push pin, and the following screen will be displayed. When prompted, either delete the last reading, the entire location, or just cancel to go back to the sensor map screen. This concludes the Data Master app tutorial. This tutorial will play again every time you open the app, unless you check the Don't Show Again box. Thank you for watching. Visit www.wagnermeters/support to send us any questions or comments.